Shut up! Welcome back to Conversations with Carol and Cheryl. So today we have a special guest, a repeat offender, (laughs) Carla. Hi there! So Carla joins Carol and Cheryl today to have conversations around birth control and birds and bees talk with your teenagers. So we are going to speak to what to say to your daughter, what to say to your son, what not to say. We're going to tell a little bit about ourselves. So Carla, do you want to start? Sure. So I have boys. How many boys? I have three boys and I now have four grandchildren, so maybe I'm not the expert in what to tell your kids stuff, but they're all like grown up, married, and you know, have their families and stuff. But I am a big proponent of talking to your kids early and often. So I have always had that kind of really open relationship with the boys and they have come to me with things that no mother should ever have to hear. But I personally am a big proponent of talking, you know, as soon as things start happening, you know, I mean, or even a little bit before things start happening. Um, When my kids turned puberty age, you know, they had condoms in their stockings at Christmas, you know, I was like the, the health department, you know, I had strawberry flavor laying around the house, you know, before they were even, you know, going to be using them. But I wanted it to be like something they weren't embarrassed of or worried about or didn't know how to use, you know, so, but that's like a totally different conversation than it is when you have girls, Right. you know, it's a, it's a lot different with the girls. Although you know, I taught dance class for years and I had that conversation with a lot of kids, you know, at dance that would, you know, you try to respect parents and, you know, if a yeah. kid comes to you to talk about sex, you know, you want to, well, you might want to talk to your mother about that. But there are some that have questions whose parents just aren't going to talk to them. And I could never get myself to just be like, well, that's something you have to talk to your mom about. And if she's not willing to talk to you, good luck to you. Yeah, you know? they need you. That's yeah. why they come so, to you. So I talk to them a lot about that stuff. Um, and we'll probably talk later about this. But also in the value of what you are as a young lady. Because, not to be crass, but she who holds the vagina holds the power. You know, and I want young women to like look at it that way and not look at it like... You know, some guy that treats you like shit is the one that you want to, you know, yeah, give away the cookies that, to. Yeah. Bestow that upon, you know. So, again, you know, you talk to them early and often, and it becomes less of a stigma. Same thing with cussing. As funny as it is, when my kids were young, I told them I think, you know, probably around thirteen or fourteen, I didn't care if they cussed at home, like shit or damn, or I man, I didn't want them rolling up going "fuck you, mom," deuces, yeah. right, 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 but. I didn't care if they said ass or shit or something. And as a result, they hardly ever said it because the stigma was gone. Yeah. So it's, when you can do something you're not supposed to, that makes a fun. difference. Yeah. So are you open because your parents were open with you? Tell me about your childhood and your experience. So I don't think I ever got a birds and the bees talk from my mother. When I was 13, my parents divorced. I lived with my mother for a summer in the big bad city. And then I went home and lived with my dad, who was a freshly single, middle-aged man on the prowl. You know, so he really wasn't telling me anything or talking to me. And it just so happened that when all of this change was happening in my life and all of these dynamics were kind of going cockeyed, I found myself in the city, unattended, because my mother worked nights, with a bunch of kids that I really didn't know that well that were much faster than I was. And that just happened to be the summer I lost my virginity. Mm. I lost my virginity on a bet. Like literally we made a bet about something. And if I lost, Jackie got my virginity. And I don't even remember what I was supposed to get if he lost, but I'm betting it, I'm betting it wasn't his virginity, you know? Yeah. So like at 13, I found myself in this basement bedroom, screwing some guy that I'd known for a month and a half. And I think if I had talked to my parents, had more conversations, and had somebody tell me what the deal is, that probably would not have happened. Yeah, so that was kind of my experience. And I think the reason I was so open with my kids and with, you know, the dance students or whatever, is because I just wanted them to know what the hell is going on. My son 
probably in the seventh grade, I want to say sixth or seventh grade. I usually tell the story and say sixth grade, but it may have been seventh. Kim Hammond was like really upset. He was upset because one of the girls at middle school wanted to give him head and he didn't want her to give him head because he still had a pre-puberty penis. People, it's middle school, like, you know, and it's not waiting for your kids to come to you or waiting until your kids are doing it is too late. Right. Let me ask you something. Do you think that little girl had a sex drive at that age? Or do you think she was just doing the act to do the act? I think you know she what was saying? doing the act to do the act. Although, like we talked before in, the, in our last podcast, I talked about the fact that at a really young age, I discovered it felt good to rub my clitoris. So I did it at a young age. And then, you know, by the time I was 11 or 12, I was, you know, riding the chair massager on the down, you know, on the regular. So it could be that she was experiencing things. I can see experimenting kissing, but I would think that if you're just experimenting, you get to that point, you're like, mm -mm. you know, <laughs> I see it. No way. Hell no. I'm not doing this. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that was kind of the case for us, but my grandson the other day, last weekend, we're chilling out and I'm talking to my grandson and he starts talking to me about chlamydia. He's 10. You know, and he's like, yeah, if you don't act right, you're going to get chlamydia. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> what am I going to get? Right. So I had to like, so I explained to him what chlamydia was to a 10-year-old. Well, that's not Clam a... Clam juice, right? That's not... <laughs> <laughs> so what, did he, did he realize he was misusing No, them? he knew that it was a sexual disease. Oh, okay. So I explained, you know about protection, you know, it's yeah. two people had sex and they, you know, weren't safe and they weren't clean and they, you know, didn't take care of themselves and they didn't protect themselves. So you, you know, this kind of thing can get spread from one person to another. Keep your penis in your pants, please. Yeah. <laughs> right? Your pants are in your hands and nowhere else. So I suffered because my parents didn't tell me about sex. Kids today suffer because lots of things are telling them about sex and graphically. So if you, for whatever your reasons are, aren't telling your kids about stuff. Somebody is. I used to say to my daughter, how do you know about that? She'd always say, mom, how do I not know? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Cheryl, when do you think it's a good time to talk to your daughter about just to begin the conversations? Well, I think early is a good time, but I didn't approach it like that. I didn't have the talk. I took opportunities to coach them, as you put it, coach them. So when she was watching Jersey Shore in seventh grade, you know. <laughs> Snooky! Yeah. Oh my God, you know. Oh, they don't even know who they're with. The guy, you know, she doesn't even know what he has. I probably made both my kids paranoid as hell. But, I mean, I would go that route, kind of coach them from what they saw on TV and things like that. And then just when she would share things with me, conversations or or um, incidents at school or at parties. Again, I would just coach her, but I never had the talk with her. So you her. never sat her down and said, no. this is the way it's going to be. So no. you just took opportunities as they arose yes. to broach the subject. Yes. And mm -hmm. I think I probably should have maybe sat her down. I don't know. When she was ready to be on the pill or ready to have sex, did you talk about that or did you just kind of find out she wasn't a virgin later? I see very few people doing what the... Fosters on television said, and going to their mother and saying, I'm thinking about having sex uh, on prom night. Well, you know, I think you find out a little bit after the fact, so you kind of just have to preload. Yeah. Well, I think all girls start with bad cramps. I need to get on the pill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I like oh it. Yeah. They're like 11 when they start that. My daughter's like, she was older. Really? She, yeah, she was older. So it might it's not so be right. when they start having cramps, it's when they're ready to have sex that yeah. they start telling you they're having Right, cramps. right, right. So you'll put them on the pill for I endometriosis. Oh, uh, yeah, or whatever. No, yeah, whatever. Yeah. No, my daughter did have bad cramps, at, uh, and I did too. I mean, mm -hmm. mine were severe too. When she came to me with that, I was like, okay. So I lost my virginity at about 13 to Jackie in the basement because I lost the bed. I'm then, dying to know what the bed is. And then I cannot remember what oh, it was. Okay. I just... 13, no parental guidance. Yeah. But I can tell you, it was 13. It was a bet and I lost. Was it a bad experience? 
It was <laughs> horrible. Okay. Because I wasn't, so it wasn't like this with my boyfriend or someone I loved. It was like, and of course he was young too, so he had no experience. Yeah. So the next day, spends the whole day following me around the house going, let me do it again so I can finish. I don't think I finished it. When I was young, I had no self-esteem. So I was like, oh no, I can't do it. It hurt too much. <laughs> <laughs> had nothing to do with, you know, back off, you loser. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, do you want to flip a coin? Maybe I'll lose again and you can do it. But, but <laughs> two years later, maybe 14 and a half or whatever, I was dating this other boy. And I had my second sexual experience, which wasn't really a sexual experience. He was a kid in the band. He played drums in the high school band, which is a totally different thing uh -huh. than being in the band. And we like did it in the back of his parents' station where you know so not long after that, thought I had a yeast infection, so I'm scratching, 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 scratching. Well, lo and behold, I had herpes. And I had gotten it from Jackie, because that's the only person who had actually successfully put a penis in me. So I wanna say, you know, I know they all people talk about well, you get pregnant the first time you had sex or whatever. I don't know about all that, but you can certainly get venereal disease and mm. what a horrible thing. Yeah. To have picked up, like that was my first lesson about sex. You might end up with herpes. Wow. You might lose twice. I have no idea what sent us in this twirl of a conversation. Well, I, I can talk to that. My son was in sixth grade, going into seventh. My daughter was in fourth grade. I decided I'm going to have the birds and bees discussion with them. They were very young, but I think you need to download them before they start doing anything, then after. And 13 is yeah. pretty young. so that's you know? exactly where we were. We were talking yeah. about, that's exactly where we so were. So what I did. If I had, if someone had had that talk with me, I might not have been in right. somebody's basement. Right. Right, so what I did, I got this giant dildo, who you've met, Pierre. Lovely penis he is. Hi, Pierre. <laughs> and I told my kids, I'm like, we're gonna learn okay. about condoms today. We go to Rite Aid, I'm like, we're gonna pick out our condoms. So we go in the aisle and they pick and they're like, oh, look at all the different kinds. I'm like, right, right. Pick the one that you're most attracted to. I don't think it matters at this age. Just that this is the aisle and this is where you go to right. get it. Pick the one you can't put needle holes in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they each pick their condom. We go to the checkout, we check out, we go home. I put Pierre on the dining room table and I say to Timmy, go ahead, put your, you start. So he rips the thing open and puts it on and they're giggling and they just think it's so funny. And then I say to Mary, okay, your turn. And she hands it to Timmy. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, well, the boy does it. I'm like, no, they don't. That's so no, funny, no, huh? no. Right. She goes, really? Cool. <laughs> So I take the one off and then she puts it on and to me as the mom, I know this sounds crazy at such a young age, to me it's like brushing your teeth, putting on a seatbelt, it's just a lesson. It's, right. But this one is life and death and this one affects me directly. If Mary gets pregnant, guess who's taking care of that right. kid? Not her, and me. Like, and like so many things with kids, it, it becomes a big deal when you make it a big deal. Right. Like you went, you got some condoms, not a big deal. You went home, you threw Pierre up there. So what? It's a right. fake penis. Put the condom on. Like if you go, oh my God, going shopping for condoms is so embarrassing, but you still have to do it. You're like, yeah. you know what I mean? You right. have to make it. I just made it not a big deal. And I said, this is what you do. You protect yourself. You prepare. You have this stuff on your person and you're prepared and that was it and i don't really know what happened to my kids at this point if they use condoms or don't use condoms but i did my job as the mom showing them how to do it and as a boy mom boys want to say oh well she said she was on the pill so right. we're covered for birth control and of course everybody knows everybody's seen the commercials you know the pill isn't protecting you from sex it's not just that, you know, I would tell the boys, just because a girl says she's on the pill, doesn't mean she's on the pill. And more importantly, it doesn't mean she's taking it correctly. I gotta say, when I was a young girl, I did not take my pill every day at 11 o'clock. Right. You know, I yeah. took it at 11 o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, sometimes I didn't take yeah. it, sometimes I was, you know. 
So many, and I always crack up when women say, or young girls say, oh, I was on the pill when I got pregnant. Most of those cases are because somebody wasn't taking their pill correctly. So from a boy mom perspective, Mm -hmm. I have no way of making sure these girls are doing that. So I drill into them, wear the condom. These days, condoms are so high tech, it doesn't feel that much different. You know, right about the time that they weren't afraid to show the girl their penis in the bathroom, I wanted to make sure they were ready. So they knew that they can't rely on the girl. It's not the girl's job to do it. And I think as a society, we think it is the girl's job, you know, so you have to really drive home to your boys that you're responsible for that. They should be responsible because I remember a few years back, and I hate to say this, but the girls are getting very shrewd. On the radio station, they had a segment. They had to have guys put hot sauce in their condoms after they used it because the girls were going back and using it to impregnate themselves. And I was kind of pissed off, but I was shocked at the amount of people, women, that called in and said, yeah, uh, my husband didn't want a second child, but I did that that way. When my kids were in high school, well, my oldest kid, I guess early high school, and the kids that babysit them were in... 11th or 12th grade and the girls used to come over and hang out at our house all the time you know we lived in a street where you know the house next to you is literally next to you you know so the community was pretty tight-knit but all of these young girls wanted to get pregnant wanted to get pregnant together had this very romanticized idea of getting well, pregnant did they do a show on them? not on the ones in my neighborhood but, but they did do a show on that, a, yeah mtv had a teen mom show yeah but there was a whole group that oh yes i know what you're talking yeah. about i don't i don't know specifically but okay. yes there was a show about that like 2020 or something did yes something. so the one little girl in the neighborhood did get pregnant and then the other two you know, were just dying to be pregnant before she was too far along so they could all raise these kids together. And they're 17, no job, dropping out of school. Guess whose babies they ended up being? Their parents. And, and I can't help but think that they weren't having very frank conversations with their oh, parents. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you just know. anchored yourself now. Yeah. It's crazy. But they thought it was like cool beans. Mm-hmm. You, you know? know, I'm convinced people should stop saying I'm having a baby. I'm going to have a baby or I want a baby. They should say, I want to have a person. Everybody wants a kid, right? (laughs) And then when they get older, you're like, this is hard. I don't know if I'd ever get a dog again. I didn't know the work that went into it. Because they're bringing in someone that could have a lifespan up to 90. Just bringing it in as if they're going to pick up a kitten. Right. When I got pregnant with um, Josh, my oldest, by the way, I was on the pill when I got pregnant with Oh, really? Okay. Were you taking it correctly? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> not even close. Again, nobody was talking to me about this shit. For me, it was life-changing. Now, I was 21, almost 22. It really was the beginning of changing my life. But that's because I am a competitive person. So... I, when I was having this kid, was going to be like, I'll show you I can raise this kid. Now, my, I lived with my mother until he was six months. I lived with my sister until he was a year and six months. And then I was out on my own. I became more driven mm-hmm. because I, not because I wanted to be a great mother, but because I wanted to give a big F you to everybody around me that was saying I couldn't do it. Right. That is the oddity, not the norm. Again, I think the ideal situation is not to be in that situation. It doesn't always have to be the pill. Like some people are very concerned about, you know, side effects of the pill. Mm -hmm. In European countries, IUD and stuff is way more popular than it is over here. We tend to go for the pill. Well, they have the shot now. Yeah, and they have the shot now. And and while you hear the horror stories about how it doesn't work for some people, for most people, you know, it does work. Unfortunately for us, too, because we're the lucky, you know, everybody always says if you have a girl, you have to worry about all the penises. If you have a boy, you don't have to worry about one. And it is a little easier on us, you know. But I talk to girl, parents of girl children. And these kids will be, like, I'm a, da- I'm a dance. They're telling me stuff. Some of my family members' kids are telling me stuff. And I go to their parents and not trying to betray anybody. So I'm like, hey, Carol. So, you know, have you been thinking about having the talk with Susie? Because, you know, it's about time to have that talk with Susie. And 
Carol's like, oh, Susie doesn't know anything about sex. Yeah. I'm like, well, Carol, she might know a little bit about sex. Like, you know, the other kids in class, not her, but the other kids in class are talking about it. So I'm sure she's hearing about it. In the meantime, the kids are coming to me going, yeah, I, my, me and my boyfriend are making out the backseat of the car and I'm giving them hand jobs. You know, so I'm trying very hard to encourage this mother. And they're like, oh, they have no idea what a hand job is or what head is. And I'm like, oh, for Christ's sakes, they're 15. Of course they know what it is. Like your daughter said, how do you not know, mom? You know, so it's, it's getting past that my, my little sweet baby daughter, mm-hmm. you know, she's not five wearing a cute little tutu anymore. You have to do this. You have to have this talk. Yeah, you can go to the movies and watch sex scenes with your kids and do all this, but when you have to literally talk about it seriously, it's like, um... And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be uncomfortable. Like I said, I don't practice what I preach. It is uncomfortable for me. I have a son. I'm divorced, but his dad's in his life and all that. So I've told him, you know, you can come to me and talk to me about anything. But that's hard for... I'm putting it on him to come to me. Right. What happened to me with my daughter. We went to the beach for a weekend and she brought this boy with her. And they're in the beach house, kind of cuddling on the couch. And I'm like, okay guys, I'm gonna go for a walk on the boardwalk and I'll see you later. And I'm on the boardwalk and it hit me. I'm like, oh my God, I just left them alone in the house. Oh no, I'm like freaking out, right? right? So I run back. Is she on anything at this point? No. Oh, okay. No, I'm Lord. like, oh my God, no. What am I thinking? I'm not thinking. I mean, I was really right. beating myself right. up. So I run back and they're fine. They're watching TV and I'm like, oh, let's go to dinner. And they're like, we really don't want to go to dinner with you. And I'm like, Mary, come here a minute. I just need to ask you something. I'm like, so, you know, I took her away from the boy. I'm like, are you having sex with this boy? Because if you get pregnant on this weekend, I will never forgive myself. Right. I am going to beat myself up and blame myself for the rest of my life. She's like, Mom, no, no, calm down, no. Right. That's not happening. It's not going to happen. And for some reason, I believed her. And I said, okay, if you're even thinking about having sex with this boy, because I really like the kid, right. and I thought he would be a really nice guy. First time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you just come I mean, Jackie was a wonderful guy. Yeah. I mean, now this guy was just like your dream guy for your daughter. Right. Like, probably like your son. Right. So, I'm like, just come and tell me about it. Just tell me you're thinking about it, and we're going to go from there. She's like, Mom, don't worry. So, I did. I, like, calmed down. I'm having a big overreaction. I'm thinking about myself at that age, Mm -hmm. and if my parents left me alone for five minutes with this boy, forget it, right? Right. The weekend progresses... Uh, Sunday night about 10 o'clock we drop him off we're in the driveway and she says mom I'm thinking about having sex with this boy so I said okay we're gonna go see the gynecologist tomorrow morning I'm making an appointment first thing you're not going to school I'm taking off work she's like well we're gonna tell her it's for my skin right (laughs) and I'm like no this is adult activities right. if you're old enough to do it, you're old enough consequences to talk about it. Right. and we're gonna go and take care of it like an adult right this is what you do so fast forward the next morning we're driving over she's like mom this is really awkward i don't want to have this conversation with the gynecologist i said look this gynecologist is your doctor i am not going to be in the middle of this mm-hmm. this is between you and your doctor now I will coach you, I will be there, but this person is there to advise you. This is who you're gonna work with. This right. is a specialist. Right. And you're gonna be upfront about what you're doing so that you get the right answer. She was not happy. I mean, she was okay talking to me about it, right. but didn't wanna bring in third parties. So we go talk to the gynecologist. She says, yes, I'm thinking of becoming sexually active. What are my options? And the gynecologist is like, oh, well, that's great. I'm glad that you came in and talked to me. Here are the options. And she's right. talking about the shot and the pill and the different kinds of pills and all this stuff. And, of course, 
Like, I don't know what the shot is. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the shot. Get in my head, you're not doing the shot. And we're not right. having babies with two heads. <laughs> like, they haven't tested this, you know? <laughs> so anyway, the gynecologist goes through everything. Very professional. My daughter looks at me and she's like, well, what do I do? I'm like, get the pill. Get the pill. That's what I am familiar yeah, with. That's yeah. what we're doing. We're not doing something I've never a Little Miss, this is between you and Yeah, your right, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So she gets the pill and we walk out of there and she's like, you know, she didn't judge me. She didn't look at me like I'm some kind of a hoe. And I mm -hmm. said, look, having sex with a boy does not make you a hoe. You're a woman. This should be something that you enjoy. But at the same time, you're an athlete. You're a swimmer. You take care of your body. Mm -hmm. You watch your nutrition. This is an extension of that. You're not going to just sleep with any boy. You're going to take care of your body. And because you do, you're not just going to give the cookies away to just anybody. She goes, well, you're sending me a mixed message. And I think this is what it comes down to for moms. She's like... It's almost like you're telling me to have sex. It's like, you're okay with it. And I'm like, I'm not saying that. She's like, you are though, because you're taking me to the gynecologist. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I don't want you to. I think that you should wait. I think that you're too young, but it's your body, it's your decision. And you right. have to make that decision, not me. And you'll do it when you're ready. I just want you to be prepared. Exactly. Right. But don't, believe me, I'm not about saying, giving you permission to do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's hard for me, but I just don't want you to get pregnant. I want you to use a condom so you don't get any kind of cootie. And I don't want you to get pregnant because yeah. I don't want a baby. Because of you, I'm being selfish here. But I can assure you, if you get pregnant, we will deal with it. Right. It's going to be okay. But this is completely preventable. Let's not do that. And that was basically the discussion. And then, of course, for like the next week or two, every time she comes home, I'm looking at her. Did like, you do it? Yeah. Did you do I it? know. That's what I Did wanted to just... say. Well, I would just give her that look, and right. she just wouldn't look at me. Like, and then, off, and then, like at one point, one day she comes home, and she kind of had that look. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you did it, didn't you? She's like, Mom. I'm like, all right, don't tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> well, before we run out of time, I think one of the things, as a girl who grew up being a bit slutty, you know, I mean, I was definitely slutty, and I definitely just wanted to be loved and wanted someone to pay attention to me and something to flatter me or whatever. And if you said nice things to me and acted like you liked me, I was like, hey, I'm the vagina. And that when you moms, and I do it with the, you know, the boy moms have to do it too, you know, respect your body, right. you know, that kind of thing. But for girls, I think part of that sex conversation or ongoing day-to-day -day, regular, this is nothing surprising or alarming. We're just going to, you know, it just comes up in conversation, talks, the value of the vagina. Girls need to hear loudly and often that what you have is a powerful thing and you should treat yourself well you should be respected before you give that to someone that you really can only give it once so think about that is this the person i really want to give this to it's a valuable thing it's a powerful thing you can use it you can misuse it you can be treated poorly by boys you can treat boys poorly because you have it you know there's a lot and you know with great power comes great responsibility yeah. you know in the famous words of spider-man so treat your vagina like spider-man yeah respect it and um be kind to yourself be kind to others be smart but just know the value of it because i never did mm -hmm. you know i never understood that i had something special that i deserved to be treated well that someone should have to work for the booty. You know, I shouldn't just be giving it around to anybody who says a nice word to me. Encourage mothers to not just talk the mechanics, you know, and not just talk about the birth control, but to talk about being a woman and the power that you have in that. It is a superpower. Thank you so much for joining us, Carla. Thank you, Cheryl.
Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Carla.